Hello, Sphinx lovers and castle fans. Welcome to my channel. My name is Yana, and this is Girls on the Road. Today's video will be about beautiful places in the Czech Republic again. So follow me to discover, first of all, Náměš nad Oslavou. This is the castle of Náměš nad Oslavou. You have to really search to find the reminders that this place used to be a gothical medieval fortress. The family of Gerotin loved everything Italian. Pizza, ice cream. Was there pizza in 16th century? Let me know down in comments. But most of all, they loved the Renaissance architecture. So this castle is inspired by the buildings in Renaissance Italy. But having Italian castle was not enough. They also wanted Italian music. Does the name Antonio Salieri ring a bell? Well, it should, at least from the movie Amadeus. illustrious court composer, Maestro Salieri. He was a famous composer and he even wrote some songs for the master of the house. He was a regular visitor of Náměš nad Oslavou. In case you don't know, the movie Amadeus was directed by a Czech director, Miloš Forman. Do you like this castle? Well, so did the Czech government and so they <clears throat> borrowed it from the Hogwitz family in 1945 and never gave it back. So it briefly served as President Edward Benesch's residence in Moravia. So to recap, it's an Italian Renaissance seat of Czech presidents with English park and French garden. You travel the world without leaving Náměšť nad Oslavou. The first Czech version of the Bible was so-called the Bible of Kralice. And one of the originals is in the library here. Because the family of Gerotin funded the publishing. If you're looking for the ideal time to visit this castle, I would recommend the week when there are actors in the costumes portraying the famous personalities that visited this place. Today I took you to the steep hill of Bernstein Castle. As you can see, it's closed due to COVID restrictions, but I'll still have some special footage for you. The word Bernstein is actually quite a tongue twister even for Czechs. How would Bernstein sound? Yeah, that's correct. That's the original pronunciation and it means what it suggests. A bear's rock. Funny enough, 
there were never bears in this region. And the same applies to the bison, that is the symbol in the coat of arms of Bernstein. The legend says that the founder of the Bernstein family was a poor miner, but he defeated a bison with his bare hands. So the local prince was impressed and gave him his own land. Bernstein is the best preserved Gothic castle in Moravia. You can really transfer yourself into the medieval times. Unfortunately, all I have are the photos of the interiors from the past, because now the castle was closed. But they will soon reopen again, so if you plan a trip, definitely go check the beautiful interiors. The castle is sometimes nicknamed Marble Castle because of the marble-like stone that they used to frame the doors and windows. I used to visit this castle quite a lot when I was a kid. I was always wondering how the princesses live. And no wonder this castle was used for filming plenty of fairy tales. From the Czech ones I can name the Czech version of Sleeping Beauty and from the international, for example, one of my favorite Italian stories, Fantagiro. It wouldn't be a proper medieval castle without its ghost story. There's a tale about a lady in white called Perchta from Pernstein. And every night when the clock strikes midnight, she walks around the castle that used to be hers. My most favorite part of the castle is the square tower. It has four windows and each is looking at a different direction. There's a tinted glass in the windows and it's supposed to represent the look of the surroundings in summer, spring, winter and autumn. The gardens were also renovated recently, so if you're in the vicinity, don't forget to check out those as well. I definitely think you won't regret visiting Pernstein. We are now at the castle Chavice. It's about 30 minutes from Brno and it has lovely gorgeous gardens. It was Jan Šembera Černohorský of Poskovice who ordered the building of this chateau. He was very well educated and one of the richest men in Moravia. He studied in Italy and Vienna and he fell in love with Renaissance. And so he decided to bring some of the Renaissance to Buchovice. No major reconstructions have interfered with its Italian Renaissance appearance so far. The gardens are open for tourists who seek some rest and soaking in the atmosphere.
so that's it. That's all I have to show you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, why don't you give me a medieval thumb up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more travel videos around Czech Republic and elsewhere. Thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely rest of the day and bye.